Hey everyone, this is Ross. Today we're in the greenhouse and I want to show you guys what I'm doing today. Uh, we have a number of trees in here that I've been trying to get them to continue to fruit. Um, but now that we're in the middle of November, it's getting quite cold. Everything outside looks like these trees over here. Um, they have no leaves. They're pretty much dormant. We've already been through a 22 degree night low, um, a 21 degree low. And now tonight is going to be a 20 degree low. So what I want to do is to get these trees in the greenhouse that we've been trying to get them to fruit. We have a fruit over here that is pretty much ready, but it's probably not going to taste all that great. I don't expect anything else in here to be ripe or to ripen. Um, and I've been trying to just slowly move as many trees out of here as I could that were pretty much finished fruiting or I had given up on. Um, I really want all these trees in here, even the trees that we planted in the ground. Because if you remember, we planted trees in the ground here um, it, sometime in the spring. This is my Colden on Blanc. It didn't really grow all that well, but you know, it's a, it's a one year old plant. Can't expect all that much from it. We have our Capra figs that we grafted onto a Maltese Falcon rootstock. And you can see that uh, there's the graft unions down there, two different varieties of Capra fig, which we've got them all tied up to this post. Uh, that way we can, we can colonize the fig wasp in here. We also have our Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross, which actually grew really well. I was surprised because this thing had this thing really had no roots on it. When I transplanted it uh, from a different spot of the yard, I really didn't dig it up very well. But it's come back super well. That's a really vigorous variety. I think it's gonna do well in here. Here's Panache, and I think this fig would also do well in here, and it did grow pretty well, but um, I don't really think it's gonna be the best fig for this particular greenhouse situation that I have. Um, a lot of that humidity gets trapped late in the fall, I've realized. You know, if I'm closing this door and I don't have the heater on in here at a high enough temperature, um, the humidity really builds up in here and it really ruined the number of the, the, really the quality of the figs in here on a couple of these varieties. So I had some, you know, like Dell's Ermitons, which was in like a stupidly high humidity and it was totally fine. Uh, but most of the varieties in here that ripened at that period, I didn't want to blast the heater too high. That was a mistake. It needs to be above at least 70, um, you know, in parts of October and parts of uh, November for you to keep that humidity low. Or you need to have some sort of fan system in here, something in play, because you want to keep it warm, but you also need to keep it dry. And uh, that was a big mistake. But let's say in future years, the humidity is not going to be so high in here, or it is going to be too high in here. I really don't want to have a panache. I've realized that with that humidity, this could be a real horrible fig in this particular environment. My cold on Blanc will handle that like a champ, and so will the Colonel Littmans. But I just, I feel like a panache is probably not the fig for this particular location. And I think in the future as a commercial fig, because that's really what these varieties here are for. I, I'm here, they're here in the greenhouse, planted as gonna be a Japanese espalier. We'll show you guys how that all works out next year. But these are all gonna be figs that I sell commercially, the, the, the figs themselves. And I don't think, even though Panache is a great commercial fig, and this is what a lot of commercial growers use in California, and it has a really, phenomenal flavor this fig it's really quite tasty um, I just can't really get it to work here I think in this location so this is not one that I'm gonna go forward with I'm gonna put something else in here and I think I'm gonna put something in here that's very early I'm gonna do a little bit of experiment and see how I can get how early I can get uh, some figs off of a very early variety like something like Hardy Chicago um, I don't know, something like uh, Campanieri or something like that. Maybe Moro de Caneva. Moro de Caneva is probably the perfect variety, actually, now that I think about it. I'm going to put Moro de Caneva in here, see how that one does, because that fig also has commercial potential, and we'll see, we'll see how early I can get that fig to fruit versus how early it fruits in the ground. I still don't really know 
too much detail on unfortunately on some of these varieties and how they're going to perform in here this is all a big experiment but what i definitely want to do right now to go back to like really the point of this this video here is to certainly get all my trees to look like this in here these potted trees need to come out they're going to get hit by that cold tonight they're going to be on their way to dormancy so that way i can start pruning them because every other tree looks like this like i said I, they're all pretty much dormant at this point you know, our first big frost was, I think, four or five days ago. Um, a lot of that sap flow, all the leaves are off, but all that sap flow is pretty much now returning down into the roots. And I can make a lot of my cuts. I can do root pruning. I can do anything I want. And I really want all that to happen in here as well, even with these in-ground trees, because this is an important physiological thing that happens with the figs, guys. It's not necessary for them to go dormant, but it's very beneficial. And if I don't have... Uh, if I don't, let's say they are, they're not dormant, they never go dormant, um, or let's say I don't get them hit with that cold, let's say I don't have a cold spell that comes in here, they may never go dormant. They may sit in the greenhouse, and yeah, I'm going to keep the, the greenhouse above 20 all winter time. That's my uh, ideal temperature range there. Um, you know, this thing will be well insulated. I put a tarp over the top, over the roof. I keep the heater on in here which keeps everything above 20. Uh, 20 is the minimum for me, but um, I certainly don't want the chance of these trees to not go dormant. I think that's, uh, like I said, an important physiological benefit that we can benefit being in a, uh, a deciduous area, you know, a place with the dormancy process. So what I'm gonna do is just harvest this little last fig. This is really, this is legitimately my last fig of the year. <laughs> this is a fig called uh, De La Gloria. It's so late. Let's see if it's any good. I, I, I kind of sort of doubt it, but we'll taste it here. It's not a bad looking fig. This fig's got some good flavor to it. If I could ripen this at a reasonable time. <laughs> right now it's just it's just too cold and uh, you can kind of taste you can taste that in the fig. It just it doesn't have enough flavor. Like it's not sweet enough. You can tell that this would be a great quality fig. But for me it's just not worth really eating. There's not there's not enough bricks in it. It's really quite a shame. So this really marks the end here, guys. This marks the end of the season. We're gonna, I think I'm gonna keep these windows closed, but I'll open the door. The heater will be off. And that will be the, the whole process here. Just a little peek of what the outside looks like right now. You know, these are trees I just took out of the greenhouse. And look how, sort of sad everything looks <laughs> and these have been outside the greenhouse for quite some time you can see there's no leaves on these we still got some figs hanging on but they're going to come off any you know anytime soon and that's just the story morning glory so um yeah that's what's going on here guys we'll talk to you soon we'll see you for tomorrow's video take care